pandemic crisis, including including this uh, online uh, uh, service, online ministries that are unrestrict, unrestricted uh, right now. We can uh, advance the gospel, preach the gospel without restrictions, whether you are preaching here in the Philippines, it can be heard in all parts of the world. Amen. Uh, so these are the blessings that we have learned uh, during the pandemic. And uh, we became more prayerful, uh, helping one another. And God has opened many doors of opportunity. And so I can say with all my heart, uh, with all these things that uh, you're hearing from the Philippines, we can still uh, thank God, worship God with all our heart. I was reading the uh, origin of the Canadian Thanksgiving. I know you are all familiar with this. But uh, the tradition, as I read, of Thanksgiving in Canada originated with the Harvest Festival, an autumnal celebration that meant to show appreciation for the bountiful harvest of the season. However, and uh, this uh, made my heart warm, Canadian Thanksgiving actually was originally less about celebrating the harvest. It is more about thanking God for keeping early, the early explorers safe as they ventured into the new world. And so we really need to, to celebrate Thanksgiving because brothers and sisters in the Lord, believers of the Lord Jesus Christ who ventured into the new world are the ones who really started the Thanksgiving celebration in Canada. In that sense, brothers and sisters, uh, Thanksgiving, the earliest report of such a dinner dates back to 1578. Panahon pa yan ng mga Kastila dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, but uh, in Canada, there's already celebration of Thanksgiving when English explorer uh, Martin Probisher and his crew held a special meal to thank God for granting them a passage through Northern America into what is today the Canadian territory of Nunavut. So, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Our uh, theme today, the topic uh, in this series of messages about Thanksgiving is turning Thanksgiving into thanks living. What a beautiful word. Uh, I would like you to please open, turn your Bibles into the passage, one of the passages that was read to us in Psalm 103. So whether it's in your iPad, whether it's in your iPhone or Android, turn your Bibles, please. And let us use our Bibles um, and uh, mark Psalm 103 because I will be uh, going back and forth in different passages here. And also later on, I will be using another Psalm uh, in uh in uh, the course of this message. As read to us a while ago, David exclaimed, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then again, he explained, he, uh, exclaimed, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We can see the expansive movement of David's worship and thanksgiving to God in this chapter, Psalm 103. David was prodding himself, calling himself, calling his soul, prompting himself and urging himself, stirring himself up to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Kausap niya. He was talking to himself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. What does it mean to bless? To bless means to say good things about the Lord. Say good things about the Lord in a spirit of admiration. Paghanga. 
in a spirit of gratitude, pasasalamat, and wonder, paghanga uh, in, in Filipino. So, uh, to bless means to bless the Lord is to say good things. We admire God. We are grateful to God. And we wonder upon the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And so, David was prompting himself in this passage to bless the Lord. He said, bless the Lord. He was calling himself soul, my soul. Remember the benefits. Speak of the wonders of God. Tell of his greatness. Then after two, two verses, verses 1 and 2, he jumped. We jump to verse 3, to verse 19. And this is a passage, an enumeration of David, enumerating 17 reasons. And so as I read this, uh, look at this passage, 17 reasons for blessing the Lord from verse 3. I will not be explaining all of this because these words are self-explanatory. Verse 3 who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. That's self-explanatory. Reasons. How many of you, God, have forgiven your sins? How many of you have received healing from God? And then verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Verse 5, who satisfies your desires with good things? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Beautiful words. Very poetic. Verse 6. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Verse 7. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. So David was reminding his readers uh, of uh, the time long ago when God, um, uh, known, made his known ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel, the miracles, the exodus uh, that God has uh, let them uh, experience. And he said, verse 8, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor he will be, will he be uh, harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sin deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. And a very popular verse that many times quoted by Christians. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. God's love, God's forgiveness. And then verse 13 is one of the most powerful, my one of my favorite uh, verse. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He knows how we are formed and remembers that we are dust. Verse 15 as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remember it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. How many of you love the Lord this morning? How many of you love the Lord this morning? Amen. If you love the Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him and His righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep His covenant and remember to obey His uh, uh, precepts. 17 benefits that David, 17 reasons that David has not forgotten in this passage that was read to us. Things about God that he cherishes and that make his soul bless the Lord. And so he was calling his soul. He was prodding himself, 
summoning himself. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Look at this 17 reasons to thank God for. And then when he comes to the end of the list in verse 19, look at your Bibles. He cannot, uh, he can no longer settle for just calling his own soul to bless the Lord. Verse 19, he has remembered so much of God that he cannot be satisfied. So many great things. So many great benefits. So he cannot be satisfied until all the angels and all the works of creation join him in blessing the Lord. So in verse 20, he said, bless the Lord. It's like saying, hey, angels, all the heavenly, heavenly hosts, join me in thanking God. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. He cannot contain himself anymore. He has to call the angels, the heavenly hosts. Let's join, worship God, and thank God together. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. This is the massive universe. David was saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul, because he's worthy to be praised and to be thankful. Giving thanks to God. You know, how many of you feel sometimes it's hard to thank God? It's hard to thank God sometimes. It's hard to even worship and praise God sometimes because of the difficult things because of the problems that we experience in our lives the calamities the disasters that have come to our lives but you know what giving thanks to god having an attitude of thanksgiving that makes you live a life of thanks living it's like a lifestyle that no matter what happens around you, your thanksgiving attitude is not dependent on what's happening around you. Giving thanks to God starts by God initiating to reveal Himself. In Filipino, na, na, nauna na ang Diyos na magpakita ng kabutihan. God has already revealed Himself to us. Our thanksgiving is triggered by God's initiative. With all the benefits, with all the great things that God has given us, if you will not be caused, be led to worship God, then your heart must be calloused. God has already given us all the benefits. Our thanksgiving is triggered by God's initiative. And so when David looked at his life and declared 17 reasons, these are God's initiatives. He was not even worshiping God or thanking God, but God is doing many, many things already in his life. So it was God who initiated. He already revealed himself. And that's what he did and is doing to us. There is something about giving thanks that is very expansive. Sometimes we think, oh, you know, we, we only thank God when good things are happening around us. How about when there's death, when there's sickness? when business is crumbling, when relationships are falling, can we still thank God? Can we still thank God? Yes. Yes, the Bible is saying, yes, re we can rejoice. It begins, it begins with God's initiative. God has already revealed himself, who he is, and what he is like. To some of you, how many of you were still here in 1991? 
when Mount Pinatubo erupted. May I see the hand? I can see you. Yeah, you were still here. 1991. I was living, up, I was a pastor in BF Homes, Paranaque in 1991. When Mount Pinatubo blow sand and rocks 98,000 feet into the sky over Luzon and even this, this, the wind blew it up to, you know, Indonesia and affected some nations in Asia. God is revealing His power. Sometimes, through a typhoon, walang magawa yung mga tao. God is revealing Himself through a storm. Sometimes, God reveals Himself like a hen gathering tiny yellow chicks under His wing. So in all things that we see, God is revealing Himself already. We need to look up. We need to see where is the hand of God? Where is God in this? And then, by the grace of God, we see the revelation of His glory. You look back in your life. You see, in past benefits and wonders, we see it in the present mercies of God. Open the Word of God. You see and read the promises of God in the Bible. We see it in future promises. But there is always a shortfall between our spiritual perception and the greatness of God. Sometimes we do not see it. We do not see it. But the intensity of the heart never seems up to what His glory deserves. That's why here David says he is pleading his own soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. It's like saying, come on, my soul. Where are you? Why do you sleep before this God? Why are you dull and sluggish? Noel, Noel souls. Why are you dull and sluggish? Wake up. David was waking up his soul. Look at what God has done. Gissing. Look at what God has done. And look what he, he is like. We feel like part of us sees and begins to feel and respond to the great of God, greatness of God's holiness. But sometimes part of us doesn't see the goodness, the faithfulness, the mercies of God in our lives. So every day, every day, make it a practice. Summon yourself like David. As you wake up, you say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not His benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name, all that is within me, not just part of me. So, as you wake up in the morning, you also wake up your soul. Hey, Noel, remember the benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And then look at verse 20 of this passage. This is another beautiful part of uh, uh, the psalm. When you have really seen the greatness of God, and you know that there is only one God over all the world and all the universe, you know what happens? Your Thanksgiving, your worship expands. David says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his work. And then verse 22, Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Where is that? Heaven and earth, the whole universe and everywhere. Bless the Lord. Everyone in all places of his dominion. In other words, 
it's not enough for everything in us, in us, to bless the Lord. But we join everything in the universe in blessing and thanking the Lord. The joy of worship, the joy of uh, uh, giving, God thanks every day. Thanks living is expansive. Our joy in blessing God increases as more and more of God's creation joins us in blessing the Lord. This is what the universe was made for. When you go to places like uh, Niagara Falls, you go to beautiful places in Vancouver. My daughter lives in Whitehorse, Yukon Territory. <laughs> and, and so I've, I've seen winter there. I've seen uh, summer, the beautiful mountains and Alps, the pine trees and everything. When, when I see these things, and even here, when you look at uh, Pagsanhan Falls, when you look at uh, the um, uh, mountain province, uh, Ifugao Terraces, God created this beautiful creation all for His glory. Amen? All for His glory. And then us, as His children, He chose us for His name's sake. Jeremiah 13, 11. He saved us. So everything in the universe and everything that happened to us, He saved us for His everlasting praise. All of these things that God has created, including the benefits that we, we experience in our lives, this is God's trigger. This is God's revelation to us. And these are enough reasons for us to wake up and say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and thank God. Now, the big question is, how do we turn thanksgiving into thanksgiving? Making it a lifestyle every day, every waking up day. And when do we need to thank God? When do we? We need to thank God. We need to thank God when things that are happening are good and even when things are rough. David celebrated God, celebrated God and thank God and worship God by press, praising Him in times of distress. I do not have time to read another uh, long passage. But look at Psalm 59. Just note it down. Later you read it. But God, David was thanking God in times of his distress. He was being hunted. He was being uh, persecuted. He was being uh, hunted and uh, uh Many people are trying to kill him. And then, another popular uh, uh, passage. Job chapter 42 verse 10. The man, Job. Job, in the midst of his uh, loss of family members, wealth and health and everything. Job celebrated. Thank God. In the midst of his affliction. And he was praying for other people. Not only thanking God. But praying for other people. Job chapter 42 verse 10. Another great example. Paul and Silas. While in prison. While in prison. They were worshipping and praising and thanking God. So not only during rosy times, during uh, sunshiny days, we praise God. Brothers and sisters, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves, we need to thank God. That is thanks living. It is a lifestyle. Why? Because Jesus is our peace. He is in our hearts. And no matter what happens around us, Emmanuel, God 
is with us. Tell the person beside you, God is with you always. In good times and bad times, kasama po natin ang ating Panginoong Diyos. He will give us wisdom. He will embrace us. He will comfort us. He will give all the benefits. And then, I would like to cite another passage sana, but uh, this is another. But you can read Psalm 145, all right? From verses 1 uh, to uh, verse 21. That's another long passage, but I would just like to highlight seven reasons why we live a life of thanksgiving. Number one, because of His abundant goodness. The goodness of God is abundant every day. Number two, He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Imagine every day committing sin, failures, and mistakes. But God is slow to anger and rich in love. How we can thank God every day because of, it, because of that. He is good. Number three, He is trustworthy. And He is faithful even though you and I, brothers and sisters, are unfaithful many times. Our God remains faithful to us. When we are down, He lifts us up. And He satisfies the desires of our hearts. And then verse and, and, and uh, 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 number 7, He watches over us and fights our battles. What battle are you fighting right now? Is it health? Is it relationship, business? What are the difficulties? What are the battles that you face? Not only God is watching you, brothers and sisters, every day, God is fighting your battle. Hallelujah. Wow. We need to celebrate. We need to thank God. For every moment that led to the day. We need to thank God for the lessons even that we have learned in life. Okay? The lessons that we have learned in life. We become wiser. We need to thank God for all the blessings. And that is given. But our drive, our passion, and our spirit. We need to thank God for the courage to fight. Through the hard times. Oh, thank God. God is with us. Thank God for the people around you. Look at the person beside you and say, I thank God for you. Huh? This is one of the greatest blessings. Uh, uh, thank God for the church. Thank God for our families. Thank God for FCC. You have a family. It's not just a church, brothers and sisters. God has placed you in a beautiful community, a family you can call. You are all brothers and sisters. Thank God for putting food in our table. Every day for the air in your lungs, you are still alive. For healing our body, for opportunities to take our life to the next level. The promotions, ah, napakadami. Mental strength to survive difficult times. Celebrate God for our health. We need to celebrate. We need to thank God for fighting our battles. There are unlimited things that God has triggered and that God has already revealed Himself for you and I. And if you have no reason to thank God for today, remember the 17 items and then plus 7 and all this that I mentioned. If you cannot thank God today, I encourage you go to a quiet place and take an inventory of your life. Count your blessings today. And I am sure you will be flooded. 
I am sure you will find many, many reasons to celebrate God, to worship God and thank God every day. And this, if this is your attitude every day, you thank God not only on Thanksgiving Day, but our life, our Thanksgiving today can be a life of thanks living. A life that is always thanking God. Yes, you and I can live a life of thanks living. It is a lifestyle, brothers and sisters. Today, call your soul. Wake up your soul if you are not thankful. Kung lagi ka nalang nakasimangot, nagmamaktol, at nagre-reklamo, if you are not, if you are not thanking God, from the top of your lung, you say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Call your soul. Wake up your soul today. God initiated everything by giving us all the benefits in life. Mentioned in the Psalms that we have read. We have, we have all the reasons to thank God for you and I. We have all the reasons to thank God for. And no matter what circumstances are, no matter what circumstances are, we can celebrate God and live a life of thanks living. Let me pray for you, brothers and sisters, as I end this message. Thank you, Lord, for this Thanksgiving Day that my brothers and sisters at FCC and the whole Canada continue the tradition that were started by brothers and sisters in the 1500s to thank God for the new land, the new home, the food on the table, the opportunities, the blessings of life. Lord, we have many, many reasons to thank God for. May you turn this thanksgiving into thanksgiving as we listen to the word of God. I pray blessings to every person at FCC, every couple, every family, your health. I pray for your businesses, for your work. I pray for God's blessings for the whole church. May God cause you to always be united, to love God, to follow Jesus with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart, and with all your soul. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to worship with you, to fellowship with you, and share this brief message. Again, happy Thanksgiving Day. God bless you all. Mabuhay po kayo. Maraming salamat.